My name is Michael Elliott Wordswamp, and I'm testifying on the behalf of Jesus Christ. I had, uh, I have been called the dreams, visions, and revelations. I had, um, I, I drink alcohol to be able to go to sleep at night because the de shut up demon in Jesus' name. Demonic attacks are really bad at night, and it's just starting, to, the sun's starting to go down. And the devil, I know this now, the devil doesn't want, it, it's, it's mission to tell the demons to, um, not allow me by any circumstances to fall asleep while I'm sober because the devil knows that God is giving prophets prophetic dreams beyond measure in this time and he knows who I am. Um, so I'm forbidden to fall asleep unless I do it in a sinful way, which is getting drunk. I have a very addictive personality. It's hard to stop, but I've been asking Jesus to help me, to give me strength and at least a, a bit of wisdom to be able to quit drinking earlier, um, to not pour one more drink. I start having fun, I'm joyous, and yes, it's, it's hard to stop. But I am doing better, and I've just been praying that recently within the last month, and Jesus has been helping me a lot with it. Um, I'm going to talk about, I did, I've been asking Jesus to teach me how to astral project, um, and he has been doing it, little by little, but Satan would rather me have a prophetic dream than even begin to learn how to astral project, because there's a lot of power in the spirit, um, and Jesus is teaching me more about it. So, but he, he's been teaching me a lot more, but barely at all. I feel a little bit like he's telling me, like, I never meant for you to astral project, but I don't know that. That's just a, a discernment. It could even be Satan letting me know that. But I fell asleep, had a dream yesterday, um, and it was most definitely prophetic. God has revealed to me a few things. He hasn't revealed to me if every single dream that I have ever had is prophetic. The ones that I testify about, I'm almost certain are prophetic. I made a testimony called Prophetic Dream, Pretty Little Liars. I'm not certain if that's prophetic. That's the only dream that I have testified about that I am not certain is prophetic. That was revealed to me that whenever I see my cat in a dream, um, it means something. It means something if my cat is in a dream. Lord Jesus, I need you to remind me if it was yesterday or the day before when I had that dream where Jody was in it. In your name, please, grace and mercy. Amen and amen. Um, I, I had a dream two days ago too, but it, it was hard. I kept falling back asleep and I'm trying to keep myself awake. Uh, Lord Jesus, please write this on my heart and mind. Bring this to my remembrance, this dream. And so, um, he would need to remind me bits and pieces of it. And the devil would be on me, having the power to make me fall back asleep. Lord Jesus, and I fall asleep for like one second, like two, 10 seconds, wake back up. Lord Jesus, write this on my heart and mind. Don't let the devil put me to sleep, please. I didn't say that. I, I said, write this on my heart and mind. Uh, let me remember the dream. That happened. Oh, and then that happened. And I fall asleep for 10 more seconds. So that one comes in bits and pieces. But I don't know if this was the dream. And I don't think it was, actually. This is the dream. I fell asleep yesterday and had this dream. I was raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I lived in a small town called Bayview, and that was where I grew up, where my childhood was, the happiest time of your life. And there was this place called Beulah Brinton, and it was just this like this center where kids could go and play basketball. They had basketball courts, they had pool tables, they had everything like that. And um, we would go there and we'd hang out, we'd play from the age of seven to the age of almost 13. And I, and I have great memories there. I was there. There was some people there, and I was in the room where there was a pool table where we would play pool. I could see the basketball ball courts, everything. There was people walking by back and forth. So in the dream, I go into Buell Britain. I go into the pool room where the pool table is on the right. After you walk in, it's on the right, and there was a pool table. There was no one in there, and I see. I remember this, and God wanted me to remember this. I don't know why, but there's a pool table in the middle of a pretty big room, and I see some shoes on the ground, and I'm almost certain I saw like a sock. I think it was a sock. It might have been another shoe, but it was like three of them. It was a like a pair of shoes and another shoe or a pair of shoes and a sock. <clears throat> and it reminded me of my cousin Derek. And I thought, this is the last place I ever saw my cousin Derek, which in real life it wasn't. Um, but it reminded me of my cousin Derek because we used to hang out there all the time. I walk out of the room. This is where I know, this is how I know it's a prophetic dream. And it could be personal because of how much that place means to me for my life. Jedediah, you got to wait a second. Um... And I, um, <clears throat> uh, I come out of the room and I see a man, Th there's a woman and it was kind of like a, like a teller booth <clears throat> and there was a woman there. <clears throat> she was a very, very dark Native American, very dark, like Chaco, very dark. She was dressed like a flight attendant and she had, um, something wrapped around her head. It wasn't like a turban, but it was like, 
please like a Jamaican woman. She had something like that wrapped around her head and it was black and she was wearing navy blue and black like a flight attendant uniform. And she spoke with a Jamaican voice. It wasn't Jamaican, it was more like like a uh, Jamaican, a little bit like Jamaican, like like that. And um <clears throat> she gave this man a bag of food and I discerned that they were giving handouts of uh like bags of food to poor people. I'm naturally poor. I usually don't, I do look for handouts because I've been poor my whole life, I've been abandoned, and I'm very poor. So, I do look for handouts, especially when it comes to like bags of food and stuff, like naturally on the planet Earth. And she gave him this bag of food and he walked away. So then I, I, I was like, okay, they're giving away food. And it was like a t flight attendant box, so there was like sliding windows, <coughs> glass bulletproof windows, they were both open. And they were clear. There was a bag of food on the left and something else on the right, another bag of something. Did it die? You wait a second. And I said, you guys are giving out uh, bags of food? She, she said, yeah, she seemed really kind, very nice, very sympathetic, very empathetic. And she said, and I said, uh, can I can I have a bag? And she said, yes. And she, she, she started scooting over the bag, but then she started walking away. And I'm like, is she giving it to me? Is it disrespectful if I reach around the window a little bit to grab the bag? So I did. I, she scooted it toward me like she was um, uh, consenting to giving me the bag. So I grabbed the bag of food. I'm holding it like this. And I'm walking with, she said, do you have a dog? I said, yes. <clears throat> it was a big bag of dog food. I was thinking about my friend match uh, dog, Jesse, when I was thinking of this. So she gave me the bag of food, the bag of dog food. And I said, thank you so much. And I said, God bless you, ma'am. And whenever in real life, whenever I'm at a store, I'm anywhere. And I tell them about God. I buy something from a taco truck. I tell them, um, God bless you. And I always say, remember, Jesus loves you no matter who they are all the time. In real life, I was I do that, and I was doing that in the stream, too. She gave me the bag of food, the bag of dog food, and I said, remember, Jesus loves you, ma'am. <clears throat> and I was about to say, remember, Jesus loves you, too. But she stopped me, and she, she was, like, walking away. And she, like, looked looked over her shoulder, and she said, uh, she sounded hesitant, and she said, uh, you know that is not known, is what she said. You know that is not known, like, like that Jesus is really Lord, that he's really the Son of God, the Bible's real. That's what I discerned from it. I said, remember, Jesus loves you. I, I said, um, oh, God bless you, ma'am. And she looked at me over, over the shoulder and she said, you know that is not known. She said, you know that is not known. And she said it in a Jamaican accent. I don't want to manipulate anyone or put this in their mind because this is the way the devil works. But she reminded me of a witch doctor, like a, like a woman that practices witchcraft in Africa. That's how she sounded, like she was a witch doctor. That might not be the case because God never told me that she was a witch doctor. I had this dream 24 hours ago, so I, I don't know. I know that it's prophetic. I know that it means something. It could mean something personal that God's personally trying to tell me. And I just prayed for the first time because I know that Jesus has anointed me to have the dreams more than to, than to, um, for him to give me the meaning of them. That's why he convicted me to get this laptop was specifically because I have prophetic dreams and I've been gifted to have them more, trusted with them, trusted to convey them to the world, but not as much to to discern what they mean. Um, God anoints people in many different areas. Some in areas more so than others, others more so, you know, so remember Jesus loves you, God is real, everything in the Bible is true. If you're a Santorian, you are not going to be blessed when you go to hell. The devil doesn't even have the power to do that. The devil is not like a person. The reason you love your kids, the reason you love your wife, the reason you love your parents is because you were made in the image of God. The devil doesn't have that ability because it's not like a person. It's not like us. Repent. It's a vital to being a Christian. Remember, God is watching everything and everything is recorded. It is not like you're sleeping when you die. Don't think that forever is 70 years. A little piece of God was put in every single one of us. It's a spirit and that spirit is meant to exist forever. Your consciousness will exist forever. But where do you go when you die? You go somewhere. It's not like you're sleeping. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. Everything in the Bible is true. Repent. It's vital to being a Christian. Jesus loves you perfectly. The devil hates you perfectly. And it is not like you're sleeping when you die. When your heart stops beating, it's not like you're sleeping. God bless you and repent.